Praise the Lord. Uh, Shalom, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining class. Are you able to hear me well? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll begin with the word of prayer. Can I ask uh, success to lead us in prayer, please? Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the eternal rock of ages want to say thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn at your feet. Receive all the glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit this lecture into your able hands, O Lord. Father, may we be dwellers and hearers of your word in the name of Jesus. And we commit our lecture, our pastor, into your able hands, O Lord. Release more wisdom, O Lord. We will divine wisdom to teach us these days in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because we are wonderful, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, success. Uh, today will be the last class for the semester and also the last class that I will be teaching you because you're our final year students. So uh, it's, it's kind of emotional uh, uh, last class, but I hope we just uh, learn um, from God's word this morning. Um, so last uh, Friday, we, we completed um, uh, studying Paul's letter to Titus and we began um, studying Paul's uh, personal letter to Philemon. Uh, of all the epistles or letters that Paul had written, Philemon is a very, very personal letter. Um, and as the book in the Bible Philemon suggests is uh, the name of a person. So Philemon, who the, Paul writes this letter to, is somebody who lives in Colossae and has a church that meets in his place. But Paul is not writing to him like he is, had written to Timothy, to Titus, um, regarding uh, how to you know, bring in order and structure and, you know, uh, 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 admin related uh, uh, issues in the church. But here uh, he's writing to Philemon because Philemon's slave Onesimus had run away uh, from uh, Colossae, from Philemon's house, and he had come to Rome. And uh, he meets Paul there. Uh, you know, there are various reasons. Uh, how he would have met Paul. Some some scholars say maybe he ran out of money and so he would have known Paul because he would have seen Paul um, uh, at Philemon's house because uh, Paul had visited Philemon and stayed in his house. Uh, we know from what he writes in his letter because uh, Philemon was someone who was somebody who refreshed the stay, saints, uh, people who come and stayed in his house. He was a very hospitable person. Um, so he would have known Paul, he would have, uh, Onesimus would have known Paul, met him, known him as a very uh, loving um, and compassionate and gracious person. Um, uh, some other scholars say that Epaphras was there at uh, Rome, you know, um, uh, would have uh, noticed Onesimus because he's also from uh, Colossae and uh, he would have uh, brought him to um, you know, uh, where Paul was staying, uh, a house arrest in uh, Rome. Now, we know that Paul was uh, not a free man, but he was uh, at house arrest in Rome, uh, which means uh, he had um, the, uh, the freedom, so to say, to have people come over and um, meet him, uh, uh, even though he was under house arrest. Um, <coughs> So Paul uh, gets to meet Onesimus and uh, he leads Onesimus to the Lord. And after Onesimus' salvation experience, uh, Onesimus becomes very useful to Paul. Uh, but Paul, uh, you know, knows his legal responsibilities uh, that he has to send back. a slave, a runaway slave, back to his master. Even though he would love to keep what does his, uh, and he sends back uh, Onesimus uh, uh, to uh, Philemon. Uh, so he sends him back with this letter. Uh, and uh, 
in this letter, Paul says that, you know, he can use his authority as, um, as an apostle, um, as one who can command an order of not as a slave and punish him, but to take him back as, uh, you know, uh, as a fellow believer, as a brother in the Lord, because we have a, a father that is uh, a God himself, and we are all uh, his sons and daughters and uh, brothers and sisters. So take back Onesim is not like a slave, but as a brother in the Lord. But Paul says, I can command you, I can order you based on uh, my responsibility, my authority as an apostle, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to plead on Onesimus' behalf to you, Philemon, uh, on the behalf of uh, Christian love, brotherly love that we shared as brothers uh, in Christ Jesus, and also based on our friendship that we shared, I am asking you to take back Onesimus and so we um, uh, studied uh, Philemon, which has only one chapter. We studied verses 1 to 15. Uh, now we look at verses 16 following. Um, so can somebody read verse 16, please? Philemon chapter 1, verse 16. Can somebody read that for us, please? Philemon chapter 1 verse 16. No longer as slaves, but more than a slave. A beloved brother, especially to me, and how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jeffina. So, um, Paul, in the preceding verses, you know, he said, he's uh, saying that, you know, um, I want to uh, keep back on SMS, but I don't want to do anything without your consent in verse 14, you know, um, and I want you, I don't want to make the decision on your behalf, because if I make that decision, you know, it'll be out of compulsion, but I want it to come voluntary from you so that you can receive uh, the reward Philemon. Uh, so he says, you know, perhaps uh, Onesimus departed for you from you for a while. Um, and maybe that was also for a, a, a good purpose. God had a purpose. Uh, so Paul is saying in verse 15 that he could see a pur the purpose of God and uh, and he uh, in Onesimus running away from uh, Philemon's house and coming to Rome and meeting Paul and, uh, you know, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ and being useful in the ministry. So he's saying that I've seen uh, the purpose of God, the hand of God uh, in Onesimus's life and he wants Philemon to also see that purpose as well. And uh, once he is able to see the plan and purpose of God, uh, then, you know, he will, Philemon will surely receive Onesimus forever, uh, not as a slave, more as a brother, in the sense not punish him uh, or hand him over to the capital punishment for a runaway slave, but, you know, pardon him, forgive him and receive him uh, back. Okay. So in that context, he says in verse 16, you know, uh, uh, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved uh, brother. Okay. Uh, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So Paul is reintroducing Onesimus uh, to Philemon, so to say, and he's saying, not as a slave, but as a brother. Yes, for you, Onesimus is a slave and he ran away, but now uh, he's accepted the Lord and uh, he's a believer in Christ Jesus, and hence uh, both of uh, you are brothers, just like both Phi uh, you know, Philemon and Paul are brothers. So uh, he's reintroducing Onesimus to Philemon as a brother and not as a slave. And uh, Paul is meaning to say that, you know, if a man is a stranger, you know, uh, to somebody, we can make them as a slave, or, you know, if um, they come under that category or a uh, uh, or a servant, um, you know, but uh, he says, how can, uh, uh, you know, a brother be made a slave? You can't make a brother as a slave. So Onesimus is not like a slave. Uh, he is a slave, but he's no longer still a slave in the fullest sense, because he's more than a slave. He's now a brother in the Lord. Okay. So that is verse 16. Uh, we'll move on to verses 17 to 22. 
So can somebody please read verses 17 to 22, please? Verse 17, if then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. But if he has wronged you or owes anything, put that on my account. I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay, not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. Yes, brother, um, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Having confidence in you, in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. But meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers, I shall be granted to you. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So verse 17, Paul is telling Philemon, if then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. So partner basically means uh, in the sense of fellow believer uh, or a brother in the Lord. So if you look on me as a man who's united with you in fellowship, in other words, we can say that, then, you know, he says, receive Onesimus as you would receive me, Paul, when I come to your house. Okay, so receive him means in the like manner, in the same way you would receive me. So Paul is actually asking Philemon to treat Onesimus as if he were Paul himself. Verse 18, if he has wronged you or owes anything, put that on my account. Uh, we, um, As I, I mentioned in the introduction, that Onesimus had stolen money, and that itself is a bigger crime uh, in the crime of uh, him uh, uh, running away. So... <clears throat> uh, so Paul is telling Philemon that, you know, um, uh, yes, Onesimus has stolen some money, and in itself, it's a capital crime. Uh, so Paul, uh, you know, tells Philemon that he will, uh, you know, uh, uh, Paul asks of uh, uh, that the value of what has been stolen be charged into his account. That means whatever Onesimus has stolen, uh, that uh, Philemon puts it in Paul's account, and he's willing to pay back uh, Philemon whatever Onesimus has stolen. Verse 19, he says, I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay, not to mention uh, you, that you owe me even your own self besides. So Paul, yes, could afford to pay Onesimus' uh, expenses, um, uh, you know, because he had stolen that. He was able, he says he is willing to pay because uh, there was a sense in which Philemon also owed Paul uh, his salvation. So Paul had uh, been the means of Philemon's conversion, uh, leading him to the Lord. And so, you know, uh, in that sense, Philemon is uh, indebted to or debted to uh, Apostle Paul. Uh, but Paul only gently reminds him of that fact as a reason uh, why he should also deal kindly with Onesimus for Paul's sake. He's not saying that, hey, you know, um, uh, I'll, I, I'll pay back the money to you, but, you know, remember that, you know, I was the one who led you to salvation and, uh, you know, you owe me. I don't think Paul is looking at it in, in that sense, uh, but what he's trying to uh, uh, say is gently reminding him that, you know, the fact that, uh, uh, you know, the reason why he should take back Onesimus or be gracious to him and forgive him um, of the money that he has stolen, which is a capital crime in itself. The reason is that, you know, uh, Philemon um, uh, uh, is debted to uh, Paul because uh, he has led him uh, to the Lord. So we can't take this verse and interpret it out of context and say, you know, all those people who we lead to salvation, you know, um, uh, we can, we have authority over their lives over their uh, jobs, over their finances, where they go, what they do, you know, keep a control over all of that. And if we need money, just call them and ask them. Uh, and they have to give it to us. They're entitled to us. No, that is wrong. That is not biblical. Uh, and Paul is not meaning that here. So we can't take this verse out of context um, and, and say, hey, Paul, 
uh, said this to Philemon. So those people I lead to Christ are also dedicated to me and I have authority over their lives and, you know, and hence I can ask them uh, whatever I want and they are obligated to do me the favors and, you know, uh, and I have control over their lives. No, that's wrong. And we know that many, um, sadly, many pastors do that. Uh, that is not what... Um, uh, is biblical what scripture teaches us and we don't see that even being modeled by Jesus um, when he lived here on the um, earth so and neither do we see that uh, from Paul because even Paul uh, as an apostle uh, you know uh, uh, could have depended on the churches that he has established uh, because uh, 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 you know he uh, uh, he has led them to the Lord, he has established the churches, and so he can receive from them. But we know that Paul himself was a tent maker, he was a businessman, and he did not depend on uh, people for his finances. He did not bother them, did not trouble them. Uh, uh, you know, so a good model that Paul has set. So we can't say that, uh, you know, he, he meant that here to Philemon. No, he just gently reminding him of the fact why he should treat uh, Onesimus kindly for Paul's sake is because uh, he, you know, Paul led him to uh, Christ um, to salvation. Okay. Uh, any questions so far till verse 19? Any doubts? Anyone likes to share anything? Any thoughts? Okay. No one wants to say anything? Fine, this is our last class, so some of you can speak up as well, be nice. Uh, verse 20, uh, Paul says, Yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Uh, uh, is uh, Joy is more literally profit. So uh, it translates in the ancient Greek word as uninimi. Uh, uh, and oninimi is the root word from which uh, the name Onesimus uh, comes from. So uh, Paul is again, you know, uh, uh, playing on words here like he did in the previous verses. Uh, so the, the name Onesimus, uh, you know, uh, uh, he uses this name here to play on words to communicate a request. He says, let me have Onesimus back from you in the Lord. That means... Uh, Oninimi is joy or literally profit, you know. So he's saying, let me have Onesimus, um, you know, uh, back from you in the uh, Lord. Then he says, refresh my heart in the Lord. Earlier in this letter, we know that uh, Paul uh, uh, said that Philemon was a man who refreshed the hearts of the saints. Verse 7, uh, we read that, we studied it. Now he specifically told Philemon, uh, how he could refresh Paul's heart, uh, and uh, he could refresh Paul's heart by allowing An Onesimus to stay with uh, Paul, okay? Uh, because Onesimus had become very useful for Paul in the ministry and even while he was uh, in house arrest at Rome. Verse 21, having confidence in your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say, um, so Paul is saying, have, having confidence in your obedience. Uh, so Paul is summarizing his request. He says, I write to you with confidence or I write to you because I have confidence in you. So we uh, see that Paul's letter is, uh, you know, basically full of uh, requests and appeal. Just a minute, please. Yeah is full of request and appeal and also full of hope, um, you know, because Philemon was not somebody who was a harsh man uh, or a bad man or someone who was rude and strict. Um, and hence, Paul had uh, every reason and also he was a good believer uh, in the Lord. And so Paul had every reason to ex expect that, you know, uh, uh, Philemon would fulfill his Christian uh, uh, duties and responsibilities even more than what what Paul expects or requested or has asked of him. Verse 22 says, but meanwhile also prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. So Paul plans to visit um, uh, Colossae after he's, uh, you know, after his house arrest at Rome, after he is a free man. Uh, so he says, you know, um, 
uh, you know, prepare a guest room in your house because I will come and stay with you. Uh, this shows the close relationship that Paul and Philemon shared. Also, uh, Paul knew that uh, Philemon was somebody who uh, was hospitable, uh, you know, and hospitality always awaited Paul uh, whenever he went to Philemon's uh, home. Okay. So um, that's another lesson that we can learn. You know, Philemon not only had was a rich man uh, who had, uh, you know, who enjoyed the riches, but uh, he used the riches that God had given him uh, to extend his kingdom. So he had a, a, a church that was meeting in his house, and also he refreshed the. Uh, the saints or the believers who were traveling. Um, we need to know that in um, in Paul's time, uh, the Christians were uh, severely persecuted. So they were in danger of living in um, hotels or in inns um, because their life was at threat. So they usually used to stay in the homes of other fellow believers. And um, having a home open for the saints, believers who are traveling, um, uh, would be such a great, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, help for uh, the saints or the believers who were traveling and, you know, um, uh, passing by Colossae to just stay at uh, Philemon's house. So we see that uh, Philemon uses his godly riches, the resources, the, the blessings that he's given to him to extend uh, God's kingdom. So we can learn this from Philemon as well, that, you know, even as God has blessed us, he has blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. Um, you know, it's more blessed to give than to receive, uh, Jesus said. You know, uh, uh, if you uh, sow, uh, you know, you will reap in abundance. If you sow in abundance, you will reap in abundance. So it's not because we want to reap in ab 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 abundance or, you know, uh, or we want to receive more. But, you know, a, a person who has tasted salvation, who has experienced the love of God, who has experienced, uh, or uh, like Ephesians one says, you know, the goodness of God, the, the blessings of God has been lavished on us. You know, if we are people who have experienced salvation, we'll be people who are always uh, blessing um, others with whatever God has blessed us with, whether it is uh, skills, talents, uh, wisdom, knowledge, riches, um, or whatever God has uh, given to um, us. Okay, so he is uh, confident that Philemon would, uh, you know, um, uh, have him stay at uh, uh, Paul, would have Paul stay at his house. So he says, you know, uh, prepare a guest room for me. And he says, I trust that your prayers I shall be granted to you. So for Paul wanted Philemon to pray for him, that he would be a free man. And that, um, uh, so here we see that, you know, Paul asking him to pray is not just a formality. <coughs> Sorry. Paul believed that it was it would be through the prayer of the saints and the believers uh, like Philemon that, uh, you know, he would be able to be a free man and he could travel again and uh, meet his fellow um, uh, uh, believers in the Lord. And then we move on to Paul's uh, last words to um, uh, Philemon in verses 23 to 25. Before we move on to verses 23 to 25, anyone has any questions, any doubts, anything I'd like to share? Okay, uh, if there are no uh, questions or doubts, okay, thank you, Jeffina. We'll move on to verses 23 to 25. So can one of you please read verses 23 to 25, please? Verse 23, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow laborers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Rosalind. So verse uh, 23, um, he talks about Epaphras uh, as a 
fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. And he says, Epaphras greets you, which means Epap Epaphras is with Paul in Rome. You know, um, and Epaphras is known to the churches at Colossae because he once uh, lived there. Uh, and even possibly people, scholars say that it was the place of his birth, Colossae. And Paul says he or uh, uh, refers to Epaphras as a fellow prisoner. Uh, not that he was also in house arrest along with Paul. No, it just basically is a descriptive term for a believer or a Christian. Um, and it's reinforced by in Christ uh, Jesus. So it just basically can read as Epaphras, my fellow believer, sends you uh, greetings. Uh, and he um, he also um, uh, you know he sends greetings from Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke. Uh, Mark is John Mark, you know, who had joined Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, and we know what happened towards the end of that first missionary journey. For some reason, John Mark uh, did not want to continue with uh, Barnabas and Paul, and Paul. Uh, did not take that very nicely. He was very upset. So Barnabas, when he wanted to take him along, if Barnabas and John Mark are related, wanted to take him along with him on the second missionary journey, Paul, uh, you know, uh, sharply uh, uh, refused. And there was a quite uh, uh, heated disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. And we know that Paul took Silas and went on second missionary journey. And Barnabas and John Mark, you know, embarked on their uh, second missionary uh, journey. But I think later on, uh, uh, Paul realized that John Mark is not the one that, you know, the kind of person he had envisioned, uh, or maybe John Mark would have changed and so we see that he's again now associated with Paul in the ministry uh, and with uh, Paul at Rome uh, ministering to um, others so yes there can be a fallout with people people can change or uh, we our ideas about them or our uh, misconceptions about them can change but once we change you know we need to accept them back work together uh, you know, and do everything uh, that is in our capacity to work in peace with one another, because that is what honors the Lord. Um, uh, what honors the Lord is unity. There's perfect unity and oneness in the Godhead. And that is what John, uh, uh, Jesus also prays about in John chapter 17, his high priestly prayer and say, Father, let them be one as we are. One so unity is very very important for the Godhead for God, and that is what He looks for. And so, as people who are in the ministry, people who are part of a church, people who are part of the body of Christ, we need to do everything that is in our, uh, you know, in our capacity uh, to maintain peace, to maintain unity, and to maintain oneness, because that is what honors a lot, pleases. Uh, the Lord, and of course, uh, you know, uh, not saying overlook things, but uh, do things in the way that honors the Lord, and the Lord will give us wisdom. He's the one who vindicates. He's the one who will knows who is a troublemaker. Sometimes he can even just remove them away from the ministry. But all we need to do is, you know, uh, maintain that unity and that peace. <coughs> we, uh, and without peace, we know that. Um, you know, the, there cannot be uh, the anointing that flows in a powerful way, the move of the Holy Spirit, uh, because that can be a hindrance from God to work um, in uh, in the body of Christ. Okay. So moving on to Aristarchus. Aristarchus was one of Paul's most faithful travel companions. And uh, Luke calls him a Macedonian from Thessalonica. He's one of the two who was, uh, you know, also seized uh, by the mob during the uproar in Ephesus. And now he is with Paul uh, while uh, uh, in Rome while Paul was in house arrest. And then Demas, I don't know if Demas rings a bell in your minds or uh, you remember Demas, uh, you know, uh, Paul mentions about him to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, Demas was somebody who loved the world, remember? Says, uh, you know, Paul writes to Timothy and says, Demas, uh, be careful of Demas because he loved this world and has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Okay, so uh, we know that Demas uh, was the same person uh, who 
was in ministry, had uh, continued his, you know, association with Paul uh, till his last imprisonment at Rome, after which, you know, uh, he left him for what is supposed to be uh, the love uh, of the world. So it's sad that somebody who's running their race well, you know, uh, but falls away uh, to the love of this uh, world or the things of this world has drawn them away so uh, you know yes it's it's good to know that we are saved that you know um, uh, uh, that we have received salvation that we have received forgiveness of our sins but we can't take that for granted um, you know that is not like a one-time um, uh, certificate that we can hold on to uh, you know for example if you want to enter a, a country yes you need to have a visa and sometimes they stamp a 10-year visa period uh, but you know it uh, it doesn't mean that you can just uh, you know you you just pass by security check and all of those things you have to go through security check and they tell you again how many months you can live in that country so the same way you know we can't take uh, our um, salvation as a one it's a one-time thing yes but we can't take that as uh, for granted we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling each day each minute and uh, you know we need to uh, continually read God's word, meditate on God's word, uh, be part of a fellowship, uh, pray, and uh, you know, uh, maintain that intimacy, that relationship um, with God. Otherwise, like Demas, you know, we can uh, be drawn away to the things of this world, and we can go away from our faith. So Luke uh, is the next person he mentions. Uh, Luke is. Uh, somebody who joined uh, Paul during his second missionary journey when he boarded a ship in Taurus. He stayed with Paul till the end of his life. And Paul calls um, uh, him as our dear uh, friend, Luke, the doctor. And in 2 Timothy, we uh, read that only Luke is with me. So, which means that Luke is someone who never deserted Paul, even um, the last days when he was in imprisonment in Rome. <coughs> And the last um, uh, phrase in this letter to uh, Philemon, uh, Paul says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The CEB says, uh, you know, I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will be kind to you. Um, or, you know, uh, may the Lord, uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Or so he uh, blesses uh, Philemon and the church and the believers that meet at Philemon's house. Uh, with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so that is uh, the book of Philemon, the letter to Philemon, a very short letter, but so many things that we can learn uh, in our context, in our day, which we can apply. Uh, any questions? Any doubts? Yes. I'm sorry. Good morning. Yes, um, Lubega. Yes, yes. I was asking. Uh, I think we expect a another uh, the last assessment from uh, for Philemon, right? Yes. Okay. So, when are we expecting it? Um. We'll just uh, see if anyone has any doubts or questions, and then then we'll move on to decide uh, the last the date for the last assessment. Is that fine, Lubega? Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, any doubts, questions, anything you all want to say? Yes, Rosalind. Uh, Pastor, it's a like it's a question related to uh, when pastors. Um, like suppose there's a pastor, it's my own personal experience I want to share. Suppose there's a pastor who is not working and if he expects us to support him or send offering for him, or even if he asks uh, us directly, like, can you send, uh, and it's be, it's a um, ongoing, like, you know, so 
how can we politely and like um, the support is being sent but because it is an ongoing thing how can anyone politely uh, say no or uh, how can we um, tell the pastor that uh, you know i may not support you henceforth um like what so just, reasons can we give politely so just to can you know, offend them okay so just yeah. to understand your context roslyn thank you for your question um of the scenario that you placed so you you have been supporting this pastor um and uh before or people have been supporting this pastor and they cannot do so uh, anymore uh maybe they have their genuine reasons or because they feel the pastor has to be self supportive and not depend on them um and also is this pastor uh you know that you're talking about is the church that uh, you are going to uh or is just some pastor who writes and uh, asks for a financial support and does he already have a church or he sees someone like an evangelist okay so pastor this is he this pastor is not from my church mm -hmm. he is a evangelist like you know a pastor who has prayer meetings uh, but then um, so i was so I, I want to say i was supporting him but now i cannot support him in this case how can i because due to some personal reasons so how can i politely tell him that i cannot or is it right to tell him i cannot uh, support you or uh, i have to just leave it that way by not attending to him um okay um I think uh, since you have been supporting him and he will look forward for your support I think it is good to let him know that you know you will not be able to support him going forward because you have your personal constraints you have uh, you're not in a position now to support him and uh, give into his life and uh, so to kindly excuse and I think he should not he should not be offended he should not get upset um because uh, it's not your uh, so called moral responsibility that you should because you're not any way part that uh, his church or you know um, or he's uh, not somebody who is part of your family that you you have that responsibility but you can just politely tell him that you know going forward you won't be able to help uh, the reason being is that you have uh, you know uh, uh, some other responsibilities that you have to cater to or you're not in a position to do so any longer anyone else wants to add or help roslin any thoughts anything anyone wants to share or help yeah pastor you are straight to the point that's the only thing she has to do because okay, when I she keeps it will be like a pretense or he we might think any other thing but when she's straight to the point she beats into the eyeball he says you know what man i think it's the end of the journey i cannot go beyond this point it's okay he, he will understand with the help of god yeah thank you lubega i hope that helped roslin yeah, thank you pastor thank you it yes. really lifted my burden <laughs> thank you so much yeah Thank you, Lubega. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else has any questions? Okay. If not, we'll uh, end class today. Was our uh, last class? Success. You want to say something? Yes, success. Oh, we can't hear you, success. Oh, success, would you like to say something? You have your hand raised. Oh, sorry, I can't hear you. 
Oh, sorry, we still can't hear you. Would you like to type it in the chat section, please? Okay, so when can we have our uh, the last assessment on Philemon? When can I post uh, the assessment? Can I post it on uh, Monday the 22nd? Or is that too late for all of you? Is Monday 22nd yes. fine? You can post it, Pastor, if it is ready, so that we can do it according to our... OK, um, you mean I can post it even today? Yeah, because the the oh, oh your the deadline will be not twenty sixth April, right? In that case, then you have to give us time. If the deadline is twenty sixth April, then yeah, you deadline can I can give you on twenty fifth. That's Thursday. And then you can post because almost all the papers, the deadlines are like twenty sixth. Okay, uh, or I can even post it today. You all can uh, give it in by twenty fifth. Is that okay? If everybody agrees. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you all so much for uh, uh, for the uh, for being part of the uh, classes. Uh, I just uh, admire all of you for your uh, you know uh, being consistent uh, in spite of uh, the the jobs that you have, the ministry positions that you hold. I know it's uh, very difficult uh, uh, to attend these online classes, to do the assessments, but I just uh, really appreciate and I want to congratulate all of you for for persevering, for enduring. Uh, thank you, Aradna, Jeffina, John Paul, Lailama, Lubega, Paul, Ribi, Rosalind, Subashi, Success, and Zelatoli. Um, uh, I think there are other students as well that have not joined today, but um, yeah, really admire all of your perseverance and endurance and just uh, um, just praying that, you know, God would give you the grace and the strength uh, to continue on, to run your race with perseverance, with endurance, fixing your eyes on Jesus. And, um, you know, just like uh, Paul says in Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, that, you know, uh, we are not competent in ourselves, but he has made us competent uh, ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, um, because the letter kills, but the spirit gives uh, a life, you know. And I just pray, like Paul writes and says, you know, let us continue to walk worthy of the Lord, uh, growing in all spiritual wisdom and knowledge and understanding um, and uh, bearing fruit in everything, um, and in every good work. So just praying that over each of your lives, um, that God would continue to use you mightily um, to extend his kingdom here on earth. So God bless you all and thank you all. Um, for being part of the last, uh, you know, last three years. It was a good journey. I learned so much from all of you. Uh, looking forward to see you sometime in life. Uh, yes, God bless. Thank you so much, everyone.